Shri Advaita Gadaka Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vindaki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopina Shankar Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Vrindavan Maya Pradam Ki Ganga Maya Mana Maya Ki Tulsi Maharani Bhakti Devi Ki Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan Ki Shri Kuchin Yatra Ki All Glories of Sambhu Devotees Oh, glory to some both devotees. Oh, glory to some both devotees. Oh, glory Sri Guru, Sri Gauranga, oh, glory Sri Prabhupada. I'm <laughs> 
राधा कृष्ण महानिशम प्रभजतो जीवात तो यो मुधा बंदे रूपा सनातन और गुजरो श्री चित्र को पालको संख्या पूर्वक नाम गान नति भी कल्लो वसानी कृतो नित्राहारा विहार कारी विचितो चैतन्य दिनो चायो राधा कृष्ण गुना स्मितर मधुरिमा नंदे न समोहितो बंदे रूपा सनातनो रक्षको श्रीजीवको पालको राधा कुंडा तथे कलिंदी तनया तेरे चवं सीवते प्रेमंगादा सदा सेशदा साया क्रस्तो प्रमातो सदा गायंतो चकदा हरे अर्गुनवरम बाबा विपुतो मुदा बंदे रूपा सनातनो रघुचको श्री चिवको पालको हे राधे प्रचते दिखे चलालिते हे नंद सुनो कुता श्री को बार्दा नकाउ पापाद पतले कलिंदी बने कुता को संता विधि सर्वतो प्रजपुरे कहते महाविवलो बंदे रूपा सनातनो रघुचको श्री चिवको पालको बंदे रूपा सनातनो रघुचको श्री चिवको पालको बंदे रूपा सनातनो रघुचको श्री चिवको पालको जय गोश्वामी अस्तिकम की Hare Krishna Prabhu Smataji Hare Krishna Today we is Kampuchi very fortunate to have a senior disciple of Shri Prabhupada He is calling us Bhakti Ritna Vinasara Narasimha Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Maharaj has always been our Siksha Guru guiding us in our spiritual progress with uh, he, Maharaj always travel in Asia, all the Chinese speaking countries because Maharaj is very fluent in Chinese. So now Maharaj is here and today Maharaj will be here until 4 for 3 days actually. Uh, so daily we have a class uh, at night at 7 p.m. Okay, please come and take direction of, you know, we need a Maharaj association. We need that Maharaj. My humble obeisance is Maharaj. So we need Maharaj Association, we need guidance in our life because we are still crawling in our spiritual life, we are still struggling. Okay, we do a lot of mistakes in our life, so we need guidance from our seniors, senior disciples. So now Maharaj will give a class on Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 10, text 26. Then we have Chattari Chattamata, then uh, followed by Gilem offering, then uh, what you call Prashadha. Hey Krishna. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
place in, they got this place in Brooklyn, and people thought, oh, Brooklyn, you know, nobody wants to go there, you know. Awful ghettos and things. But over the years, the whole place just changed, and they started developing, building condominiums. And the building which we purchased became worth a lot of money. And in fact, there, were, there was a figure quote here was sixty million dollars. There were the people who were ready to pay sixty million dollars, but the devotees decided they wanted to keep the building because it became prime location spot. So things change. You never know what's going to happen. Right. They gave the, the, did they give this land to us or did we have to buy it? This one is the chest. We purchased it. Our quantity was called, the land was given by government. Yeah. This land is purchased. This is purchased. This land is purchased. purchased. But that land is given. That land is given to government. No. In uh, Melaka, in Melaka, the devotees said in Melaka, Melaka. The, yeah, that they were renting a house in Melaka. And they were doing RT every day. So the neighbors were complaining, you know. <laughs> you sure, you know. Uh, you get complaints. Like in Kuala Lumpur, you know, the neighbors complained. Although we were there first, they came later. They came later and they were complaining. Of course, they, the complaints were justified because the devotees would park our cars in their driveway. They couldn't get the cars out. They were stuck, and so we got we got a lot of complaints from the neighbors there. But uh, Melaka, they were renting a house, and the people were complaining. So the government said to the devotees, "Look, we'll give you a piece of land if you build your own temple." So they gave some land. They gave a piece of land, and the devotees took the land, and the, somehow they managed to raise the money and build the small temple there, nice temple. Yeah. And afterwards, then the neighboring land, beside where they'd given us free land, the, 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 the government must have sold some land because some Chinese man came and built a huge, big Chinese restaurant, you know. <laughs> and now, even if we want to buy land, we cannot. We want, if we want to expand our temple, it, it's difficult because the land became so expensive. Whereas before they given it free for us. So like that, you don't know what Krishna has in plan. In Calcutta, our temple in Calcutta, we rented, we used to rent a place, it's Albert Road, if you know the Calcutta, the original Calcutta temple from the beginning, they rented this property. You know, to rent in India, once you rent, they can never get you out. <laughs> so, people will, any wise person, if they have a property, they won't rent it. Because if you rent it to the people, you can never get them out. The law is such that the tenant has the rights. You know, the owner, forget it. So it's not a good idea to rent anything. And even people have very nice houses, they, they would never rent it because they know if you rent someone, you never get them out. Anyway, we rented the place in, in Calcutta. And eventually, you know, they sold it to us because, you know, we were not going to move. Yeah. And so they sold it to us. And, and then later on, then we bought out the lady downstairs. There was a lady downstairs and her, well, the old lady died and her daughter got the place. We had to purchase, we had to pay her some money, quite a bit to get her out. But we got it. The other half of the building is still unoccupied. You know, we only have the, so we have half. The other half is it's just unoccupied. They want a huge amount of money for it. But anyway, Calcutta 
because they have a lot of other centers there now. Just like in Delhi, in New Delhi, they have, I think, 14 centers. In Bangalore, there are seven centers. And uh, in Mumbai, we have several centers also. Of course, you have nice, you have Juhu, you have Chapati, you have Kargar, not yet open. It's coming up, big center. And you have Mira Road also. So, Prabhupada saw that actually, in, in Prabhupada saw in Prabhupada to, there should be a temple in every marketplace in Delhi. <laughs> so Gopal Krishna Maharaj has done his best to fulfill that prophecy. And centers India, you know, I, I went to India in 1975. You were not born. <laughs> You were in some other body. <laughs> Where were you? I don't know. Maybe you were a man somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, 1975, India was quite different, you know. We just had a few centers. But today there's centers all over India. It's really a success story going to India, it's, you know, wonderful centers, very nice centers. At one point, I was the temple president of Hyderabad. We had a temple in Hyderabad, in Abbots, a place called Abbots in Hyderabad, under British. So, uh, when I was a temple president, the temple had just opened about a year, not even a year, and they asked me to put, they put me in charge for a little while. I'm hopeless if I can manage you know, I didn't last very long. But when I was in charge, there was not even a door on the temple, you know. There was no door of the temple. I used to sleep in the doorway at night because there was, there was no door. <laughs> anyway, now if you go to Hyderabad, it's beautiful. It's so magnificent. And they bought, they purchased adjoining land, and they made it so nice, and there's a big guest house, and oh, it's just so beautiful. You know, generous people came forward, you know, because India, the, India, the economy developed a lot since those days, you know, in the 1970s it was, was not so good. That was like Indira Gandhi times, you know. She was the Prime Minister and things were moving slowly. But now we find so much money in India. And even one man came forward in Hyderabad and said, Can I do some service? Could I help in any way? So the Holy Second said, Why don't we build a temple? So I said, Oh, okay. <laughs> So he found some land in a residential area in a suburb of Hyderabad and he put up this huge temple, you know. He spent like 10 crores to build this big temple, several floors, put a lift in the building as well. <laughs> and uh, beautiful deities, three altars with big side, big marble deities, Radha and Krishna and Gordi Thai, and then General Thaladev Subhadra, of course they're not marble, but oh, did they do it? I can't remember this. Oh, Sikharam Lakshman Hanuman. Yeah. Anyway, beautiful big deities. And there was a traveling, a group of traveling brahmacharis and they were traveling around, so they told them, you're going to stay there in the temple and develop the temple. So they got this group of brahmacharis stayed there, and people started coming, and every night they have this huge kirtans, you know, they have so heavy, heavy kirtans, you know, very nice kirtan, and the people are all coming, a lot of Rajasthani people living there as well, you know, and they really like kirtan, so they come regularly, and they the temple is just so lively, it's wonderful. Just came out of nowhere, you know. 
So these things happen. Krishna sends people to do these wonderful services, you see. So, um, of course, the other parts of the world got to be developed as well. <laughs> Outside of India, it's not quite so easy, you know. It's, there's, we were fortunate in London because George Harrison came forward in the 1970s, in Prabhupada's time. George Harrison came forward and purchased the Bhaktivedanta Manor. We could never have bought that place ourselves. But George Harrison paid for the whole thing. And to maintain it is not easy. You know, it's one thing to buy a temple, but it's another thing to maintain it, to keep it going. It's a lot of expense, especially if you have the older building. Like Bhaktivedanta Manor, it's an older place, you know, old, ancient not quite ancient, you know. So it needs a lot of work to maintain. Recently they, they, did a, they built in a couple of uh, extensions onto the Bhaktivedanta Manor. So they managed it. Because they, they have a law, they have a law in England, that region where our Bhaktivedanta Manor is, you cannot even cut down one tree. Everything is protected. They call it the green belt. So you cannot even chop down one tree. If you want to put up a building, no, you cannot do it. So it, it takes a lot of uh, red tape. You have to go through a lot of red tape to do anything in England. You know, here in Malaysia, they put up these big buildings and everything. You know, not so bad, not so difficult. But in England, you know, it's very hard work to do anything, to put up a temple and stuff, not so easy. So anyway, Krishna consciousness is going on. Very happy to see here Kuchin also developing. Very nice. Prabhupada always said, keep the wheels rolling. Okay, so we will read this Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, text 26. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya
translation of all trees i am the banyan tree and of all of the sages among the demigods i am narada of the gandharvas i am chitrarata and among perfected beings i am the sage kapila purpur the banyan tree ashwatha is one of the highest and most beautiful trees and people in india often worship it as one of their daily morning rituals among the demigods they also worship narada who is considered the greatest devotee in the universe thus she is the representation of krishna as a devotee the gandharva planet is filled with entities who sing beautifully and among them the best singer is chitrarada among the perfect living entities kapila the son of devahuti is a representative of krishna he is considered an incarnation of krishna and his philosophy is mentioned in the shrimad bhagavatam later on another kapila become famous but his philosophy was atheistic thus there is a gulf of difference between them om manjana tamarandasya gyananjana shalakaya chatur milamena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manovishtam sapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadamayam tadati savadam pitam vande
and the branches come down and the branches go into the ground and they become like a root and then it grows and, and you can't tell where the tree began <laughs> because it's a banyan tree nobody will cut it because it's a sacred tree very sacred tree but usually Lord Shiva will reside under the banyan tree Lord Shiva doesn't like to build houses right? and he built a house one time and then when he did the Griha Pravesh all the Brahmanas came and did the Griha Pravesh and, and then they had, he had to pay them all well so he, he gave away the whole house in charity there was nothing left after he paid the Brahmanas so he thought no need to build another house already built and given away, nothing, no, no point to build another house. So Lord Shiva's happy residing under the banyan tree, banyan trees. We, so sometimes of course people will criticize us that you people, you worship trees, you know, sometimes you get these nasty people, atheistic people, you people, you worship trees, we worship Tulsi, of course, we offer Tulsi, and we worship also the banyan tree, yes, we do, we do worship them, but you should understand why we worship them, that they're very special, just like Tulsi, Tulsi is a devotee of Lord Krishna, and she takes birth in the form of a tree, just simply to give service to Krishna. We offer Tosi leaves in devotion to Lord Krishna. It is said that without offering Tosi leaves, Krishna will not accept our offerings. So Tosi leaves are very important. And we also decorate our body around our neck. We put Tosi mala and we chant on Tosi beads. So Tosi is very sacred to the devotees. And similarly, the banyan tree is also sacred, particularly for those who are devotees to Lord Shiva. They would like to make a Shiva temple underneath the banyan tree. So the banyan tree is very dear to Lord Krishna. And then of sages, among the demigods, the Lord says, Narada. There are many sages and Devashi. Devashi Narada, a sage among the demigods. So there are many demigods, but Narada is the greatest of all the demigods because he's the very great devotee and he's one of the Mahajans, one of the authorities on devotional service. There are twelve Mahajans mentioned. And Swayambhu, Narada, Shambhu, Komar, Kapilo, Manu, Pralado, Janako, Bhishmo, Bali, Vaya, Sakhi, Vayam. Lord Yamaraj is telling us the names of the authorities in devotional service. And Narada Muni is one of the Mahajans. Narada Muni has also given us the Narada. Uh, Pancharatrika, which is the, the scripture which tells us how to worship the deities. So Narada is very, very much an authority in devotional service. Of course, he, he's one of the sons of Lord Brahma, and he's also in our disciplic succession. We are in the Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya, Vaishnava, Sampradaya, and Brahma's, one of Brahma's sons, Narada Muni, becomes the successor to Lord Brahma in the disciplic succession. Brahma had many sons, but Narada is especially prominent because Narada is a devotee and he goes everywhere preaching. He's traveling. He's we call, sometimes we refer to Narada Muni as this eternal spaceman. <laughs> because he's always traveling 
and he can appear in many different places. So Narada Muni has many famous disciples. Some of his disciples, people like Dhruva Maharaj was a disciple of Narada Muni. And then also Prahlad is a disciple of Narada Muni. And if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, you can read also about Maharaj Prachini Badishat. He was also a disciple of Narada Muni. And if you go to Navadweep and go on Parikrama there, then you will go to the place where uh, Maharaj Samudra Singh used to live. And Samudra Singh, he was visited by Narada Muni. And Narada Muni preached to him and got Samudra Singh to give up his materialistic activities and become a great devotee. So Narada, like this, Narada is traveling everywhere. And Narada also comes in Chaitanya Leela. How does he come in Chaitanya Leela? What form does he take? Srivastakuri. That's Srivastakuri. And Srivas is the ex expansion of Narada Muni in Chaitanya Leela. Because we're worshipping Panchatattva. Panchatattva, the five features of the Absolute. So you have Lord Goranga, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then you have Lord Nityananda, who is the expansion of Lord Chaitanya. And then you have Advaita, who is incarnation of the Lord. And then we have Gadarhar Pandit, who is the internal potency of the Lord. And Srivastakur is the marginal potency as expansion of Narada Muni. So in this way, five features, Panchatattva, five different aspects of the truth. The expansion, the incarnation, the internal potency, and the marginal potency different features of the Lord. So Narada Muni is very active, preaching, going everywhere, and he's playing his veena and chanting the holy name of the Lord. And of course, in Krishna Leela, he played a, a lot of parts to accelerate the appearance of Lord Krishna and to accelerate also the killing of King Kamsa, these different things. So Narada was he's very, very much involved, he's very active, very great devotee. So we are all respecting him. And Lord Krishna says here that of the Deva, Devarshinam cha Narada, among the Devarishis, he is Narada. And then the Gandharvas are mentioned. In the high, there are different planetary systems in the universe. So Gandharva Loka is a planet above our earthly planet. You just try to keep the children quiet. Yeah? So Gandharva, Gandharva Loka is a higher planet. We are on Buloka, and above Buloka you have Bubar Loka, and then Twarga Loka. Like that, there are different levels within the universe. So, we're not so foolish as to think that there's life only on one planet. You know, some people, they think there's only life on this one planet, and everywhere else there's no life. But the Vedas tell us that everywhere in the universe there is life. And so there's a higher planetary system, different planets, and Gandharva Loka is there. And the Gandharvas, they're especially noted to be expert in singing and dancing. 
But singing and dancing, they, they're very expert uh, in, in these activities and they, they come for Krishna's pastimes. Sometimes they will come down here and they will come and sing and dance. We, ha we had uh, one devotee, they did a beautiful recording, uh, Gandharva Loka, you know, they were singing Kirtan. And it was just like Gandharva Loka, beautiful, sweet Kirtan. So there's one Gandharva there called Chitrarata, and they're described as being the best, the most prominent among all the singers there in Gandharva Loka. So Lord Krishna is identified as Chitrarata among the Gandharvas. Lord Krishna's representative is Chitrarata. From Srimad Bhagavatam we learn that even Narada Muni in his previous life he had also been a Gandharva. It is described how uh, Narada Muni was a Gandharva in his previous life and he was very handsome and he was traveling with the Gandharva ladies and he, he was a young man and he was traveling with these beautiful Gandharva ladies and the Prajapatis were there. They were going to attend a festival some, in some other place in the universe and Narada Muni being in the company of the young women he became intoxicated and he began to joke with them and he began to sing the glories of the demigods rather than glorify the Supreme Lord. So the Prajapatis took this as an offense. Indeed it's an offense. Just like we say consider the names of the demigods like Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma to be equal to are independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. So Narada Muni in his previous life as a Gandharva, he jokingly began to chant the names of the demigods in Kirtan. And Prajapatis were upset with this and they cursed him that he needs to become humble because he was joking because of the company of the young women and because of his good looks and so on. So the Gandhar, the Prajapatis, they cursed him that you should take birth in the womb of a Sudra woman. And so it happened in his next birth, Narada Muni was born in the womb of a Sudra lady. But you will know from Srimad Bhagavatam because it's narrated by Narada Muni himself to his, one of his disciples, Srila Vyasadev, right? I, I mentioned Dhruva and Pralat. I didn't mention Vyasadev, who is probably the most important of Narada Muni's disciples. Anyway, uh, Narada Muni was cursed that he would become the son of a Sutra lady. So in the womb, taking birth from the womb of the Sudra lady, he was helping his mother and he got the association of some mendicants who came to visit their house. Somehow his mother was doing some service for mendicants and they came there and stayed at their house and Narada Muni, as a young boy, he had the opportunity to serve the mendicants. He was serving them and he got their blessings. And they, they blessed him and they, they, they guided him, taught him how to practice spiritual life, how to meditate. And so shortly after the mendicants left the home, Narada Muni's mother died from a snake bite and Narada was left alone. So he began to wander the world and he experienced life in many different places. And then he began to remember how the sages had taught him how to meditate. 
and he began to do meditation and he was able to realize the Supreme Lord. And then in his next life, after that, he became the son of Lord Brahma. He became Narada Muni. So that history of the different births of Narada narrated in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it tells us how he was a Gandharva. <laughs> and he was singing. So it's a warning. If you're a good singer, don't be proud, right? You have to be humble. You're a good singer. So stay humble. Don't, don't, be, don't get cursed. Don't chant the names of the demigods. Just chant the names of the Supreme Lord. Alright, so that's Gandharva, Chitrarata, and then we hear about Siddhanam Kapilomuni. So Kapilomuni. Kapilomuni, the son of Devahuti and Kadama Muni. So Kapila Muni was born in the womb of Devahuti. Generally, people today, they only know the atheist Kapila. They never heard of Kapila, who we know from Srimad Bhagavatam. But they know the atheist Kapila, who propagates that life comes from matter, and it says that and it's a very atheistic philosophy, but that's how people are today. A lot of atheistic people in the world. And it's difficult for them to understand that God exists and God is a person. Anyway, Lord Kabila came long ago and he taught the Sankhya philosophy. Sankhya philosophy which is that how to analyze the analytical study of the elements of material nature and come to the conclusion how everything is the energy of the Supreme Lord. So Lord Kapila, he, his teachings are there, third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. You can read it, it, beginning chapter 25. And Srila Prabhupada lectured on that chapter, chapter 25, and his lectures have been recorded in the book, Teachings of Lord Kapila. It's a very nice book, all Prabhupada's lectures on the verses from the 25th chapter. So Lord Kapila, the son of Devahuti, he uh, became the guru of his mother. Her husband, Kardama Muni, took sannyas and went away and left her in the care of her son. Of course, he knew that the son was the incarnation of the Lord. So, uh, Lord Kapil, uh, Devahuti took shelter of her son and inquired from him about the path of self-realization. And in this way, Kapila Muni explained to her the Sankhya system of philosophy. And Devahuti went on to become a fully liberated soul and went back to Godhead. So there's a planet in the spiritual sky for Kapila Muni. Kapila Muni is one of the eternal forms of the Lord. And there's a planet there in the Vaikuntha realm where Devahuti resides there with her divine son Kapila Muni. So Kapila is also another vibhuti of Lord Krishna. So in this way Lord Krishna is teaching us through all of these different personalities and objects of the world. He's teaching us how we can remember him. All right, are there any questions, any comments on this?
So we have to learn how to remember Krishna. That is the most important thing for all of us. Smarta Vyam Satatam Vishnu Vishmarta Vyam Jatu Krishna Sabi Vidhi Nishida Shur Eta Yor Eva Kinkara. Always remember Krishna and never forget him. That is the essence of all scriptures. So, how to do this? Read the Bhagavad Gita regularly. Srila Prabhupada encourages us a chapter a day. Try to read one chapter. At least recite the verses. You can recite the verses. Sanskrit. You may like to recite the Sanskrit. You may just like to recite the translation. If you have more time, you can read also some purports. But there are many devotees in our Krishna consciousness movement, they like to recite a chapter a day. And there are also temples where every morning they will read one chapter. So, in, in our Kuala Lumpur temple, for example, every morning we have reading from Chaitanya Charitam. <laughs> We're trying to read Chaitanya Charitam Rita every morning. Like this. If you read a chapter a day of Bhagavad Gita, then in 18 days you can finish the Bhagavad Gita. And you read it again. And you keep reading it. And after you've read the Bhagavad Gita 10, 20 times, then you start to remember it. And you start to know it. So this is Prabhupada's formula. Prabhupada gave us these instructions. We should try our best, try to follow these things. In some places, they have the ladies recite. Gita Govinda, or Gopi Git. Gopi Git. Do you know the Gopi Git? Do you recite? Gopi Git, no? Some places they do, they get all the ladies recite Gopi Git and the men will recite Purusha Shukta. And this way, you know, recitation. We are following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's our duty to recite. Just like we recited Shikshastikam, we recited invocation prayers. Yeah. The followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the line of Mahaprabhu, they're expected to know these things and to recite these things one after another. And similarly, these children, they can also learn. I was in South India and there was one young boy he was reciting, he was only six years old, and he was reciting the whole Vishnu Sahasrana. He didn't know how to read, but he could recite the Vishnu Sahasrana because every morning his parents would recite, and so he learned from them. So it's very important, those of you who have children, you should take care of them by reciting regularly scriptures and keeping them engaged in hearing transcendental sound vibrations. It's very nice to have children, but it's better when you make them nice devotees and get them to chant Hare Krishna and get them to recite the scriptures. That is the goal. If your children grow up and they're not devotees, then what was the good? No point to have children unless they become devotees. So our real business is to our family members to make them all Krishna conscious. Right? We have a family. It's a blessing. But the, ble the blessings are mature when they become devotees. You want them also to hear and chant about Krishna. Don't waste this valuable human life. 
we're given a great opportunity to come to the temple, to associate with devotees. You should take advantage to hear and to chant. That is a real, that is a real business of devotees. Okay? Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hello, Krishna, brothers, and buddies, and those. Those devotees who want to give Dashina to Maharaj, please come forward. Okay, thank you. Blessings for Maharaj.